I'm a big user of the Bash shell. My name is Spencer Crum. I work on the OpenStack team at IBM. I'm from Portland. I'm Nibbleizer basically everywhere on the internet. Um, and so what I want to talk, I've wanted to give this talk for a long time about these cool little tricks I started doing, and at first it was fun, and then it got a little out of hand. These are patterns. Don't actually do what I do. Take the patterns and use those. Um, and there's a Git repo that I'm sure I'll get a lot of pull requests on with your stupid tricks, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is mostly aliases and functions, and the way those work is by adding new commands to your path, and I can't type. So what I'll do is I'll make SL equal LS no matter what else happens. <laughs> I don't want to type vagrant anymore, so I just type V. <laughs> I don't want to type git, I type G. Um, I don't want to type git push origin master, I type a four-letter thing that doesn't mean anything to anyone, but this is personal configuration, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> no one's reading my pseudo logs anyways, be honest. <laughs> Another thing I'll do is I will make a really long command with semicolons, and I'll put that all in there. So if I'm just like, screw this, I'm pushing it, screw you all, BSC. <laughs> you get it. You said you wanted it. Push early, push often, let's do it. You also see a validate command. All right, so I don't know the alphabet, so I have a bash alias that will dump the alphabet. I have a bash alias that will dump Unicode so that I can paste it into chat. And it turns out the ASCII table's on man ASCII, but I don't want to use a pager, so I have something that'll dump it straight into my terminal. You can put regular expressions into bash aliases and then use them in grep. You can put environment variables into aliases and make new commands. UTC date will dump the date in your server's time zone. Um, I have a lot of Git repos that are full of YAML and JSON, and so I have these two commands that will validate JSON and YAML before I run a 15-minute acceptance suite. <laughs> I'm sure I'm the only one that forgets the final comma. Um, I'm not going to tell you how this works, but I strongly encourage you to find some way of dynamically reprogramming your prompt. So adding git, turning git off, adding your directory, turning that off, inspecting which SSH file system you're using, turning on RVM or uninstalling it forever. Um, this is a simple little function. This is our first bash function. This will set up an SSH tunnel and then fire up Windows because I write for APRESS and not O'Reilly, so I have to use SharePoint. <laughs> Sorry. This is probably the thing you want the most. You're, you're five directories deep inside a Git repo. You're scared and alone, and you just want to go back to the top. And this will take you to the top of the Git repo. And then it will set old PWD, so CD dash will take you home. <laughs> um, GitHub integration. So this is something I stole. But what it does is essentially you're in some Git repo, and you type PR17, and it'll check out the 17th PR so you can run the tests or Git grep or whatever you're trying to do. Um, there's, there's more uh, GitHub integration on the next step. I don't want to go press the fork button. I don't want to press the pull request button. So bash utilities have existed for a while that allow you to do this in the command line. I highly recommend you add that to your workflow because otherwise you're just kind of wasting time. Um, so you can override things that are already in your path with bash functions. So user bin CD record is in your path and you write a function called CD record and it'll run this instead of that. And that means that it can eject, which is what it's supposed to happen after you burn a CD. Um, I have stuff that I use. This is the most OpenStack slide in the entire deck. Um, I have this long designate command that like, tells me how many Route 53 entries I have. And I got tired of remembering it, so I put it in a bash alias. If you, if you have something you're always inspecting your history for, you should probably get it. Garrett is a Java server with an SSH API, which is really weird to use. So I wrote a bash function so that it'll just eat everything with that dollar star and then just dump it into this. And so Garrett on my command line behaves like a real Unix utility. And then it got crazy because I decided I could do my own argument interpretation in if statements inside the Garrett function and add commands to Garrett that weren't there to begin with. And so you can get further. You can go write a case statement and you can have cascading commands and all right, so this is the number one thing, or this is the, the, the fancy thing. If you type vim plus 24 file name, it will open up that file on the 24th line. That second thing will give you the last command you typed. And grit grep dash n will give you this colon number colon. And so I overrided vim. And so whenever I type vim, it says, was the last command you typed git grep? Did you give me something with colon line number colon? If so, I'll open up that file to the line number that matched your most recent grep. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Spencer Crum. I work at IBM on OpenStack. I'd love to talk to any of you later about any of this. Thank you.